Hey everyone, me Kevin here. Sorry for being a bit behind this morning. Uh, it's been a very long time since I've done this uh, mobile. Uh, I, I kind of forgot everything in terms of how to do mobile. <laughs> uh, but anyway, welcome. Thank you for being here anyway. So I am absolutely blown away that NVIDIA is reacting the way it is. Now, I, I have a lot of exposure to NVIDIA, so I feel like I'm, I'm biased towards NVIDIA, and I'm still sort of blown away by this. But then again, I also recognize that NVIDIA is probably going to be the company that just knocks everyone's socks off with how much profit it actually does generate. Uh, NVIDIA is, uh, is, is just absolutely crushing it right now. And it goes to show you with NVIDIA, and I'll, I'll, let me see if I can remember how to pull this up on the charts here. Uh, when, when you break a very big technical barrier, markets are so willing to uh to pay for it uh and so that's exactly what we're seeing with nvidia i like i'm telling you the technical analysis stuff it's not that hard because you want you don't want to learn the hardest stuff because you want to learn what everybody's paying attention to and you look at a company like nvidia now uh so let's see if i can do this correctly okay without messing this up all right there we go so let's look at a company like nvidia we are now at um go okay all right give me my tools there we go okay so we we broke through and we very well closed uh above the 493 fibby but not just the 493 it's the 493 and the psychological 500 if we can today get a full candlestick above because let's take off the average here just so you can see the normal candlestick uh it, actually wait a minute wait a minute Look at that. Did we get a full candlestick above? No way. Look at that. That's actually a full candlestick above. I mean, we could just look at the open there at the top left. Uh, 495. Ah, it's not a full candlestick above the 5. I really want to get a full candlestick above this 5 level right here. So so if we close above 5 today, that's that's pretty exciting and bullish for NVIDIA. And, and I'll tell you, this is not the company that you would expect somebody to say like, oh, yeah, you should be really bullish about NVIDIA for it's, uh, you know, after all, it's a lot of people think very expensive. I actually disagree that it's very expensive. I think Coinbase is very expensive. Uh, and I'll give you an explanation for that. If I do a fundamental analysis on NVIDIA, uh, which is all going to come down to how much you think they can grow earnings per share. That's, that's what this game is about. Their valuation actually looks I mean, almost low, dare I say. So we're looking for uh, $12 of EPS ending this year. So if I look at uh, Jan 21 or Jan 2024, so this month, their EPS is expected to be 12. So let's go 522 divided by 12. Okay, we're selling for 43.5 times, right? So think about that for a moment. 43.5 times, that sounds really, really rich, right? Well, for a company like this, you have to factor in the growth so what kind of growth do we see in earnings per share over the next you know, four years? Well, probably more up in the near term and then less forward. So Wall Street consensus. And I always like comparing my estimates to Wall Street consensus because I think the average growth will probably be around 25% in EPS for this company. But you know, Wall Street's got them at uh, 66.1 plus 16.4 plus 1.4 plus 17.3. That's uh, 100... Uh, 0.9. Oh, wow. That's crazy, actually. Divided by four. There you go. 25.25. So so Wall Street consensus is actually right where I am with growth. And then if I divide their price to earnings ratio by that growth rate, you're trading for less than two times earnings growth. And that's phenomenal because you compare this to a company like maybe Apple, which has become a little bit more of a safe haven play uh, for folks. Although we have had some recent pullbacks because of the, the Chinese iPhone uh, delivery numbers being rumored to be down 13%. Here's a company that's expected to grow maybe 11%, right? Here's a company at 185, 185 divided by $6.62 of expected earnings for 2024, uh, ending September 30th. You're trading for 28 times. I'm going to divide that by about 10, 11 percent. You got you got a multiple on this of 2.8. I mean, you're almost. I mean, you're not quite double Nvidia, but but you're you're a lot more expensive than a company like Nvidia. So on a and, and the same is true for Tesla. Tesla is much more expensive than Nvidia when you actually look at uh, the the projected earnings for this company. And I don't think earnings growth of 25 percent 
uh, per year over the next four years is unreasonable for NVIDIA. So when we consider that, yes, yes, we look at NVIDIA's chart as like, oh my gosh, but like, how could a chart possibly look like this and it'd be valuable? You know, especially when here I am, uh, Mr. Anti-Coinbase with his Coinbase thesis all on, on, on uh, ehack.com, you know, oh, how can I be the guy who's like, oh, look, it's ran so much, it's time to sell. Well, there's a fundamental reason I think this is ridiculous and, and Coinbase is a short upon ETF approval or, or at least in, in, soon after ETF approval. I, I don't know how the market's going to react, so I'm not short it now. But uh, I'm definitely going to be paying attention to what the market reacts with. Uh, the I do think we are going to get ETF approval tomorrow, by the way. Uh, and when I say we, I mean the market. I, I don't have a horse in that race. I, you know, it doesn't matter to me. But I do think it's um, a game changer for, uh, for crypto because it's really going to start us down this road of uh, securitizing different crypto assets in a way that uh, basically just makes other crypto assets go a little more mainstream. So I don't necessarily think that's a horrible thing. That, I think that'll be very exciting. Uh, there are a lot of people that say that crypto ETFs will take away the spark of what made crypto crypto, right? So there's, uh, there's some of that potential risk. Uh, anyway, all right. So uh, look, this Nvidia pump, it, it, it is a little wild. I think some of it may be because of CES right now. I mean, well, let's be clear. It's almost all because of CES and euphoria at CES. But let's look at AMD and understand how much of this has to do with price competition. I discussed this a little bit in yesterday's video. No, apparently not much. Uh, Nvidia is flat in pre-market, but also up 5% yesterday. I think people are coming to realize that they're probably the real showstoppers at CES because they have a real product. Now, I I don't want to sound like, you know, jaded, but I am. Uh, most of the crap that we see at CES is just smoke and mirrors. Like, these aren't real products. <laughs> okay, like, all right, that's, that's really, really jaded. I shouldn't say most. But just a lot of the stuff, it's like, whoa, that's so cool. I can't wait to have that one day. Like, are you really going to buy a hologram box? No, you're not. And uh, at least not anytime soon. So point is, like, what is what is the real product that's being showcased? Well, you know, what you're finding from companies like NVIDIA. So uh, it's, it's pretty exciting. Um, uh, I will be very interested to see what happens. Uh, doesn't NVIDIA always run up during a... Bitcoin bull cycle. You know, this I think is interesting. I also think it's interesting that you see my mouse over here where you see it, except for me, this is actually me selecting comments. That is, oh, that is inception-y. Anyway, hey, Kevin, doesn't NVIDIA always run up during the Bitcoin bull cycle? Um, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, Bitcoin's relatively flat right now. I mean, you could argue that, yeah, yesterday we broke from, you know, 45 to 47. Maybe that's what's pushing NVIDIA. I, I think they should be a little more decoupled given that uh, you're seeing this uh, Bitcoin movement due to the ETF, not because, you know, okay, yeah, miners are going to be making so much more money now. Centralization risk, one person group owns 51%. There's a chance uh, to change the chain through proposals, code is law. Okay, this is, uh, this is in terms of who has all the custody. I mean, this is very much like, a, you know, the ESG complaints that you're hearing these days of... Uh, of, uh, oh, the ETFs have too much power because they can vote the way they want. That, yeah, yeah, you're, you're not incorrect. Uh, there will be a lot of consolidated power. Kathy just sold 133K shares of coin. Yeah, good for her. You know, I actually DM'd her my thesis and, and she replied to me, I'm not trying to take credit for, you know, her sales or her activity with Coinbase, but... I mean, let's be real. Like, I kind of think that's pretty brilliant. <laughs> so good for her. Like, if I owned coin, I'd be dumping it right now, too. <laughs> Hashtag not advice. <laughs> uh, who knows? Maybe it runs up to 200 before it starts tanking, you know, and then everybody makes fun of the thesis. I, you know, who knows? Is it reasonable for an ETF to start trading the very next day once it's approved? Oh, that's interesting. Um, no, probably not. Um yeah, you got to get that SC. I mean, maybe like there'll be so much marketing around it. I would say for like a normal person, like if you created an ETF and the SEC approved you, are you going to be able to trade it the next day? Probably not. 
maybe because there's so much money in this Bitcoin move, can they technically pull it off? Of course. So I suppose it's entirely possible uh, that, that it could happen. There'll be a lot of enthusiasm around it, right? That'll be the big moment. People will be kind of swiping up. Uh, so, so maybe, oh yeah, here, see Van X says, uh, it would start trading Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't surprise me. Okay. Uh, what makes you think the ETF will be approved tomorrow? The expiration date. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Okay. So anyway, so, okay. Let's see here. Uh, what else do we have here? So, so I wanted to clear that up regarding NVIDIA. I also wanted to clear that up regarding uh, in, um, Coinbase. And uh, I know that some things are, are giving, playing a little bit of a, a give back from yesterday. Uh, so, you know, we have a lot of red this morning. Hold on a second here. Let me do this. Let me get rid of What is this? Start exploring. Just I don't want to start exploring. Oh, there we go. Okay, it just lets me function. That's good. All right, so that means I can go back to, uh, see, I don't know what I'm doing, mobile, but it's okay, I can figure it out. I can do this. I know I can. StreamYard will come save the day. By the way, the cool thing is I can do all this stuff mobile with StreamYard. So if you have not seen my sponsor yet, metkevin.com slash StreamYard, they're pretty awesome. Go check them out. So, um, okay, yeah, so you're definitely getting a give back from yesterday. Uh, you know, open door was up 9% yesterday. This thing fluctuates like crazy. If you need a lot of volatility, that's the place to be. It's, you know, up or down 10% on a day on a regular basis. I hate the company, but I still watch it. So up 9% yesterday, down two here in the pre's. And, uh, you know, you've got a lot of, uh, moving back and forth here. I mean, then again, the end phase was up half a percent down 1.4. Uh, SoFi was up 3.7 down 1.4 as well. So, who knows what you're going to get? Tesla 1.25 yesterday down 77 bips right now in the pre-market. I do know the yields right now are being a little funny. So we're looking at a 4.03 on the 10-year treasury. Uh, oil rebounding a bit from yesterday's 3 to 4% drop. It's up 2.3% right now. So international blend sitting at about 78 bucks as well as gold basically doing nothing again over at 2042. Sorry for everyone who loves gold. Uh, the question now is what what is the like what's gonna happen in March, right? That's gonna be the March and earnings. That's that's it. Uh, that's gonna be what drives I think the market uh, over the next you know um, there we go. Hold on one sec. Over the next three months. It's trying to figure out what what do we what do we need to price in? Uh, what are we likely going to see occur in markets? Uh, right now, I think folks might be a little enthusiastic about how how many rate cuts we'll get, how quickly. I do think we'll end up getting these rate cuts that markets are expecting. But I'm torn, honestly, on March. I see the Fed kind of possibly trying to take Fed. And saying let's let's just get one more month of data. They're weirdly only going to get one more month of data if they wait Feb, or sorry March, because they're only going to get the April. Well, they're not even going to get the April data set. They'll get the data that releases in April for March. So they really they're just going to get the March data set if they don't cut in March because the next meeting is May first. So you know between now and the March meeting, in a weird way, you're going to get January. CPI's release, which is for December, February CPI release, and March's CPI release, you'll get three data points between now and March, and that's going to drive everything because you'll have three jobs report, three CPI reports. Uh, that will drive everything. Whereas if you wait another six weeks, you're really just getting one more report. But I think there is a chance the Fed's going to be, dare I say that, petty. Be like, well, just, just one more report. And now on the flip side, though, you need to start paying attention to you know, companies right sizing and what's happening to their stocks. So it actually makes me nervous when Unity says, oh, yeah, we're going to lay off 25% of our workers or like, you know, 1,800 people, I think it is. Uh, yeah, it's 1,800. Okay. Their, their stock's down like 1%. There was a moment here in pre market, I think, I'm pretty sure they were positive. Let me see. Yeah. So look at that. Your stock actually 
pumped in the pre-market and now they're down 1%. But just the fact that it ran with a 25% cut screams that you have, that you have, uh, how should I say, you have a market, and I, I talked about this on eHack, you have a market that is going to demand, in my opinion, absolutely demand profit in 2024. 2024 is going to be the year uh, that everyone just looks for R, O, and the I. That's it. Like, and I'm talking about on company spending. So I'm not talking about like your return on your stocks or whatever. I'm talking about company spending. What what are they going to look for? Returns, returns, returns. And anything that sacrifices returns is going to be scrutinized. And that's going to include jobs. And that's why I worry we could yet end up getting some kind of jobless, uh, joblessness recession this year. I'm, I, I'm very nervous about that. So markets cheering Unity. Unity said Monday they're going to lay off 18 100, 25, yeah, here it is, 25%. And then and then the stock's, you know, basically not moving. Uh, after having jumped a little bit, watch it goes, it ends up going green today. I think it's going to send a signal to a lot of companies that, oh yeah, we can do some more of these sort of cuts too. And if we do cuts like this too, maybe we too will be rewarded in our stock price. So uh, I also think that you're going to want to see a company like Tesla uh, say, you know what? And, and I selfishly want this too. Obviously, you should know that about me and Tesla. Like, I want them to get up there in this next earnings call and be like, damn, you know, thanks to advertising, we kicked butt this year. Oh, thanks to advertising. <laughs> now, obviously, uh, thanks to workers and, uh, and the amazing efforts of the people at Tesla too. I just selfishly want as much credit as possible for advertising. <laughs> uh, but uh, Tesla's been advertising, and I, I think they've been doing a fantastic job. And so... I want to hear them say it's been profitable, not just selfishly, but also because uh, that's, I think, what markets want to hear. Markets want to hear we are doing things that are profitable. And if cutting jobs is profitable uh, while not sacrificing profits, the stocks will be rewarded for saying that. Uh, so, again, that's something that makes me a little nervous because it's going to incentivize joblessness, jobless creation from, uh, you know, your, um, what's it called? Um, oh, there we go. We got some extra light. It's going to incentivize joblessness or jobless, joblessness creation from uh, companies directly. So you get that from companies directly. Uh, you know, the Fed better react quickly. So, you know, I know we had our initial right sizing uh, in 2022 when we had this uh, sort of roller coaster of companies starting to lay off, but that was nowhere near enough of a layoff, mostly because people were able to just, you know, how can I say this? Uh, bluntly, like people were able to find another job. So, it's sort of like, yeah, yeah, I got laid off by Microsoft, but, you know, Amazon and Apple hired me or like five other companies were looking to hire me. So, like, in that case, does it really matter if you got laid off and you had, you know, 10 other companies willing to, uh, to hire you? Well, no, then it doesn't really matter. In fact, you may have even moved jobs and gotten paid more. So, does it matter you got laid off? No. Is that same thing going to be true now? In my opinion, no. Like, I feel bad for these Unity employees. I would have rather been fired last year when there were two job openings for every person who lost their job uh, compared to now because now it's substantially harder. You have 1.4 job openings. I mean, that's – I don't know what that is. I don't know, 60% harder or something like that. Uh, that sucks. So um, I feel bad for those folks, and I do think that uh, if, if they – if we see companies get rewarded, we are or we're going to see a lot more layoffs because this is going to be the year of profits. And unfortunately, the year of profits does not mean profits for employees. It means profits for corporations. So again, depressing, but probably true. Okay, enough of my jobs rant. That was lengthy. I apologize. All right. Do we get any data this morning? Let's find out. Okay. 
Uh, we got trade balance. Survey was negative 64.9. Trade balance came in a little less negative than expected at 63.2. And then we got uh, small business optimism came in at 91.9 versus 91. So a little bit better than expected. That's interesting. Uh, small businesses being optimistic is somewhat surprising to me given that interest rates are so freaking high right now. Like you have to you just have to be a brute to survive as a small business owner in this sort of environment if you have exposure to like you know any kind of payables that are charging you interest yeah it's a tough time as a small business so uh good for you if you're out there one of those folks kicking kicking butt uh despite the insanity of uh, of the time so um uh anyway uh okay good so then the next thing i want to touch on is uh, after advising investors to shun stocks during last year's roaring rally, Morgan Stanley's Mike Wilson, Wall Street's most notorious bear, is softening his gloomy tone on U.S. equities. I'm always, I'm always a little worried when that happens. I don't like it when the bears flip flop. No, bears need to stay bears because if everybody is like, yes, Kevin is right, inflation is going to be transitory and there's going to be a Nike swoosh recovery, then I think I'll be wrong. <laughs> like, you have to think about this. Do y'all remember when I launched my ETF? Every YouTuber who's in the finance space who had an opinion about it made a video and it's like, Kevin's so dumb for being so exposed to chips. How could you be exposed to chips during this time? Chips are trash. Uh, chips are, you know, one of the best performing sectors in, in 2023. So I love being where everybody hates being. The same is true in real estate, by the way. People don't realize, but what I, what I do with house hack is I find money where people are afraid to make money. Uh, and... I think that, like, you know, I was making this joke yesterday, and maybe somebody can tell me if my analogy is bad here. But think about this. You know, 100, 150 years ago, if you went to, uh, if you went to, I don't know, some, like, oil-rich uh, land, and you just sort of dug a hole in the ground with a tiny little pump jack, oil would just come spewing out spewing out of the ground and then all you had to do was go find a barrel catch some of it and you were basically printing money you know how hard it is to get oil to spew out of the land now i mean now you need to have billions of dollars of infrastructure to either deep sea you know uh drill or to frack it's insanely difficult today so I think it's become a lot more challenging to to actually find ways to really meaningfully make money. And I actually think in the next you know decades, it'll be even harder. So it's like, go make what you can now. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, that's that's uh, it's 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 an extreme analogy, but I just I, I want you to think about it like, was it easier to be an oil baron 150 years ago or is it easier to be an oil baron today? And I think the answer to that should be pretty obvious. So anyway, uh, okay, somebody here is asking me to clarify my thoughts. Okay, I haven't read all of this yet, so let's just put it up on screen. This could be a mistake. Can you please clarify your thoughts? You see a soft landing in the economy remaining stronger than expected, yet you also see lots of jobs being lost. Yeah, that's a very, very uh, fair question to ask. So the way you reconcile this is that my concern about joblessness has everything to do with the Federal Reserve's activities. I think if the Federal Reserve is too slow, we're screwed. Uh, and we will not have a soft landing. So you actually have to reconcile my beliefs with what you think the Federal Reserve is going to do. That's the big question mark. So, okay, let's think about that for a moment. If the Federal Reserve recognizes, okay, we've done a little bit too much, it's time to uh, pause, so to speak, and it's time to start cutting. Because pausing, keep in mind, pausing is going to hurt us. Pausing uh, will actually strengthen uh, the tightness that we're seeing in the economy uh, just by virtue of 
doing nothing. So if the Fed does nothing, we have higher interest rates. If the Fed decides, okay, we've gone potentially too far, we are about to create a lot of joblessness, let's start reacting and responding and cutting rates, then we'll actually have our soft landing. So the Federal Reserve is at this choice now where they can choose to have the soft landing or not. And the way they reinforce having the soft landing is by inflation data coming in the way they need it to, uh, which I think will happen. Uh, so, you know, and they'll have the next three reports to review, and then they'll be able to start their cutting process. Uh, so a soft landing is possible as long as the Fed responds appropriately. If the Federal Reserve responds too late, then we will not have a soft landing, and we will have a joblessness recession. So I want to be very clear. I don't think we're going to have a joblessness recession if the Fed responds appropriately based on the data we're seeing. A. B. Uh, if... Uh, uh, if the Fed's too late, then we won't have a soft landing. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, just looking at some of the, uh, the these other comments here. So you're hoping jo Jerome Powell will cut in time before the economy gets too weak. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Mm, let's see. Janet Yellen said on Bloomberg, we have already achieved soft landing. I could have missed you discussing it. No, I actually did touch on that yesterday. <laughs> Bob says, sorry, you put too much emphasis on the Fed. If you don't think this economy is rigged by the Fed, then, then quite frankly, I'm sorry for you. Let's be real. The Fed is everything. The Fed is... Uh, the Fed runs this ship. They're on the bridge, man. <laughs> okay, so what I said about Janet Yellen is I don't really care what Janet Yellen says because she's a politician right now. You know, uh, I, I think when you are wearing the hat of being the puppet of promoting what the current administration needs you to say, you know, what you say isn't necessarily that valuable. It's like, the minutiae to the Trump, right? It's like, okay, this is going to be the political extension of what Trump wants to be said, just like Janet Yellen. She's the extension of what Biden wants her to say, or maybe Biden's handlers. I don't know. I guess it depends on what capability you think Biden has. Anyway, so um, yeah, hopefully that adds some clarity on that. Okay, now I'm going to try something here. Uh, let's see. So I can do this. Can I add the eHack banner? Oh, look at that, folks. Isn't that... Oh, this is... Oh, not the, it's not the eHack banner. It's, it's for the courses. It's the gold membership. Oh, that, that works too. Oh, that's really nice. Okay, I like that. Look how sexy we made that with that cyber truck over here in the corner. Mm. I don't know if we want to go gold bar, actually, now that I think about it, because people are going to think we're talking about literally, you know, the precious metal, but whatever. Uh, if possible, would love to hear your opinion on the expiration of the bank term funding program. The program started in last March. Uh, yeah. So where have you been? Uh, that's fine. I'll, I'll explain. So, okay. Here's how we're going to do this. We're literally just going to go to ehack.com, and I'm going to explain your fears. And I'm just going to be real. I'm just going to explain your fears away, okay? So you'll see that in just one moment. It, I, there, no, there's... You should have no fear about the bank term funding program. Uh, this is where people are like, Kevin, you are a Fed puppet. I'm like, no, I just understand. It's different. All right, so what are we going to do? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to type in bank into the little search. And we're going to look for the bank term funding program. Where the heck is this sucker? It was just within the last couple of days. Pretty sure. I, oh, I might have I might have used the acronym. Anyway, it's over here somewhere. So this was the debt crisis. Uh, this is Atlanta Fed now, percentage chance of cuts. Oh, maybe it was a little further back. Uh, oh, man, what did I do with it? Maybe I accidentally deleted it. Holy smokes. Oh, my whole bank term funding program post. Oh, no, no, no. Here it is. Here it is. Okay, no, no, it was on January 2nd. That's funny. That's where it pinged to it. I'm like, no way. It was seven days ago. Holy crap, man. Time's going by fast. How are we on January 9th already? Okay, so the website worked. I didn't screw up. Um, I just mentally messed up. So the program does not allow new draws after March 11th, 2024. However, 39% of the program is due back March 22nd. 
So you can just simply look at these numbers and line them up, knowing that there's a one year period for you to sort of like be able to take advances on this. However, the Fed's probably going to have extended terms. So I said 39% of the program is due back March 22nd, 73% is due back uh, July, uh, June 7th. And then I wrote, unless the Fed has extended terms. Okay, so let's think about that logically for a moment. Okay. Is the Fed going to risk anybody thinking that there is a banking crisis right now? No. I don't really care who you are, if you're a bear or a bull. I think, I think anybody is delusional if they think the Federal Reserve is not going to protect this program and that they're going to let banks fail because of a stupid expiration they put on a Word document. Do you realize the terms of this program? Look at it. It's linked on ehack.com. Click it. You want to see how fancy this is? Folks, it's literally Jerome Powell hacking away on a Word doc. That's it. Those are... Those are the terms of the bank term funding program. You think he's not going to go and update that and say, yeah, you actually have 10 years to pay it back. Come on. So um, that's my belief. But let's also be real. Uh, you know, the program terms say advances are allowed for one year. Doesn't actually say technically, uh, at least I didn't see it anywhere. They said advances are allowed for one year, but they didn't say anything. See, look at this. Advances will be made available to eligible borrowers for a term of up to one year. Well, that implies it's due and payable after one year. But they did not provide any repayment terms. So we can assume that everything in balloon payments at the end, that there's a, a due and payable that's, that's 100%. But that's an assumption, uh, A. And B... The amount of money that's in this program is actually relatively nominal. I mean, this $140 million is, you know, less than a month and a half, a month and a half of what the Federal Reserve's vacuuming up from the repo facilities, you know, at a rate of about $90 billion uh, per month. So, so no, I, I think this is, uh, yeah, this, this is a no bueno. This is not a big deal at all. Uh, okay, so... When uh, when you say if the Fed is too late, they will cause a hard landing, what do you consider too late? Well, when, when the joblessness starts, right? So when the joblessness starts and you start the cycle, then you're screwed. Somebody here says, I lost all credibility saying the Cybertruck is sexy. That's okay. Uh, you know, I, I probably don't have much credibility anyway. I'm just some dude on the internet. So, okay. Um, yeah. So that's my take on the bank term funding program. Uh, okay. So get rid of that, get rid of that. All right. Oh, I still have, oh, ooh, I still have that. That's kind of cool. All right. So anyway, I, I have all these tools with StreamYard, metkevin.com slash StreamYard. Look at that paid promotion. I throw that up. Yes. Yes, it's sponsored. All right. So uh, Morgan, so, okay, I want to know why Morgan Stanley is softening because, again, it makes me nervous when the people that I'm grateful to be opposite of start capitulating like you know what the day i sell tesla is i feel like the day gordon johnson buys tesla okay like when gordon johnson's like i was wrong i'm buying tesla stock i'm gonna be like what has happened it is time to leave gordon johnson has actually flip-flopped I don't know that it'll ever happen. I do want to visit him again in North Carolina. People get mad at me where they're like, Kevin, why do you want to interview that bear? I'm like, well, I want to hear his perspective. I want to hear, you know, what, what dirty things he has to say about Tesla so that, you know, I can see what kind of merit they have. Uh, and I think meeting people in person is very... Uh, okay, yeah, it looks like we're we're hitting a spike of bad internet here. That's not ideal. Sorry, but anyway, uh, you know, we meet people in person. It's it's uh, quite valuable. But um, okay, so I'm getting a little warning that my connection's unstable. So I'm sorry if there's nothing I can do about it. Like that's all I'm going to say. There's literally nothing I can do about it. So um, okay, let me try to just keep reading, and hopefully, at least you can hear it. So. Um, 
Morgan Stanley suggests that growth will likely need to reaccelerate while rates remain relatively tame for equity prices to move materially higher from here. Well, I don't think it's growth. I think it's profit. That's my take. That's a difference. I think it's EPS growth versus uh, top line growth. Those are going to be, I, I mean, that's a debate that I would make. Uh, so, but that's Wilson's take. The view marks a shift from warnings he delivered for uh, last year about a 2008 style crash in corporate earnings and a big plunge in share prices, only to see the S&P rally 24%, right? Wilson has turned more constructive on equities in recent months, uh, but his 2024 price target for the U.S. stock benchmark still implies a nearly 6% drop from current levels before the year closes out. Morgan, you know, yesterday I posted a video on the channel about uh, you, you know, all of us were like, oh, no, we're going to have five days in a row of uh, like the first five days are going to be red and that's bad for the year. You know, I thought I qualified that very well that I didn't think like it was very meaningful because it was only five years. But then like, I don't know, just as I posted the video, I like, didn't even mean to go look, but it's just like a bunch of people are like, oh, my gosh, Kevin, you used just a five year sample. I'm like, bro, did you watch the video and then take my own criticism to criticize me? Ugh, it's exhausting. Uh, Anyway, so, uh, okay, Morgan Stanley, Mike Wilson. I suspect the Fed's dot plot, pre-announcing several key interest rate cuts in 2024 and five, uh, will lead Mike Wilson to do an out about face. Okay, so this is basically other people talking about Mike Wilson's opinion here. Wilson has turned more conservative on equities in recent months, but his 2024 price target still implies a 6% drop. We saw that. So that's all they say is that he thinks, you know, growth is going to have to come back. Well, that's boring. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, but I, I mean, I think it's earnings growth, but okay, I'm fine. Huh, all right, so what else do we have here? Someone from the Fed, let's see, what's this? Michael Barr's signature bank capital overhaul has faced one of Wall Street's fiercest lobbying campaigns, stark opposition from con congressional Republicans and even TV attack ads. But for the Fed's vice chair of supervision, it's a rare resistance from the central bank's governing board that may prove trickier to navigate. What is this? Uh, oh, oh, this has to do with bank capital requirements. Right, 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 right. Okay. Every bank is lobbying so hard to prevent the increase of bank capital requirements. I actually, like, I hate saying it, but but I kind of think that you kind of need more, uh, 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 like, reserves for, bank, uh, for banks. I get a little nervous when I hear that banks basically have, I mean, you know, nominal to no reserves. That makes me nervous. So, um, but, but then again, I know there are already a lot of stringent capital requirements. So I know the argument is like, well, there's enough, you know, do we really need more? And well, I don't know. I guess it depends. I mean, taxpayers just bailed out the banking sector through the banking crisis. You can't say they didn't. Taxpayers are backing uh, the FDIC, which took an L on, uh, on, on insuring uh, deposits without any haircuts. Which basically means FDIC is like, there's no limit to FDIC insurance. I mean, there practically is, I guess, if there's like a one-off crash. But I don't know. It just, it felt a little driven by people with too much political power. Uh, and so it was kind of a little frustrating. But then again, you know, maybe that's not a surprise. Uh, and, uh, and then, of course, the bank term funding facility, any losses the Federal Reserve incurs is backed by, uh, or are backed by the Federal Reserve, or uh, are backed by taxpayers. The bank term funding program is backed by taxpayers. Crazy, huh? Anyway, okay, so uh, Max here says Shopify just announced a partnership with Twitter. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it's unwise for people to try to sell on Twitter, but how different is that, I suppose, from advertising? I guess it would be maybe some more like capabilities of actually transacting within the app versus having to leave the app. Right, because if you click a link now, you're at a totally different platform. Maybe you open a different app. Maybe Sh uh, uh, Shopify is trying to get you to download the Shopify app as opposed to just transacting within Twitter. That's good. I, uh, you know, I do think that Elon has the best of intentions for uh, for X. Okay, so I think what are we? We're a couple. We're like eight minutes away here from uh, from the bell. Are we? Yeah. I'm in a different time zone, so I'm a little like, what? This clock doesn't look right. Okay, uh, ooh, look at this, HSBC, ooh, bear argument, says uh, Goldilocks scenario may flip. 
as Fed rate cut bets are overdone. A growing mismatch between aggressive pricing for U.S. rate cuts and a resilient economic fundamental set reduces the need for such easing, uh, creating a reverse Goldilocks scenario. Oh, we've heard them talk about that last week. We were looking at some of their um, research on this. Um, Yeah, I mean, reverse Goldilocks is basically like just people unwinding how many rate cuts we might get this year. Yeah, I think that might be true in real estate more so than stocks. I think in real estate, people have this expectation that real estate is going to skyrocket again. I don't think so. I mean, I don't think it's going to like plummet. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I, I don't see a real estate skyrocketing in Jefferson. So we'll, we'll see. But uh, what do we have here in terms of rate cut expectations? Yesterday, we were about 60% rate cut expectations for uh, March 20th for a 25 BP cut. Now we're sitting at 59.7%. May 1st. Mm. May 1st, we're basically 9% hold, and then everything else is cuts. So we're pretty much pricing in those cuts. Uh, and then five cuts are being priced in at about over 90% for 2024. Yeah, crazy, huh? Uh, why is my mic moving? Because I'm holding it. It's kind of inconvenient. Still waiting for the poopsie doopsie commentary? Yes. How are we going to watch the opening bell? Well... I'll let you know when I figure that out. I think I can figure it out. Uh, I've played this game before. I just, honestly, part of me is more like, how much patience do I have to actually do it? But now that you've asked, I feel obligated to have the patience to do it. So I think we'll be okay. Anyway, all right. So let's take a peek at uh, what some of the pre-market movers are here. And I just play a little trading commentary, shall we? We've got five minutes to go, which probably means we have four minutes, given that I'm going to have to figure out how to make this work. Uh, right. Window. Okay. There we go. Yes. I know what I'm doing. Yes. Nobody knows. Uh, by the way, seriously, if you're not part of the course member live streams, we're going to do the course member live after this. Join them. Uh, check out the gold course, which is like gold level of value, not uh, not, not a precious commodity. All entrepreneurship, sales, never pay taxes in America. I mean, there's so much um, real estate, stocks. It's it's really a really great intro to everything, and there's some ma- amazing detail in there. All right, enough of that pitch. That's at mekevin.com. Okay, so enough of the pitch. Let's get into what's going on in the pre market here. We're pretty red right now, like nothing's green. I also don't have as many stocks on here as I usually do, this traveling commuter. But it looks like we've only got NVIDIA up about 36 basis points. Embraer sitting at 17. Good for them. Uh, and then we've got, yeah, here we go, Carvana, Redfin. Eh, things are down about 1% to 2% almost across the board. Let's go for the Qs. Qs are down 72 bips. So we just had a little drop off here over the last hour. Uh, looks like the market's suggesting, hey, you know, we had a little, uh, we had a little enthusiasm. Uh, thoughts on TMF? Yeah. So TMF is is just really just a proxy for what's going on with the Treasuries market. Uh, yeah, it'll probably take until, I mean, we went down to three point eight on the ten year, for example. And now we're back at like four point oh three. It's going to take a soft CPI report to really get TMF to rally again. So uh, you have to make a bet that Thursday morning CPI comes in soft. So Thursday morning, uh, we're looking for CPI month over month 0.2, CPI core month over month at 0.3. Those estimates are getting a little a little elevated over there. So you really have to bet that inflation is going to come in soft. If inflation comes in soft, you're going to scream gold. And see some winning there. Oh, that was scary. Okay, I had no idea what was happening there, but it was CNBC coming out. All right, so that's very important. Let me see. Okay, let's practice the bell here. Let's see if y'all can help me with this. So what we're going to do is we're going to... I There's going to be a lag on this, but at least you we'll be able to see it. Like, it's, it's going to be day. delayed. You're not allowed to downgrade that. Oh, am I Where supposed to get off doing this? On that? 
He does seem really to indicate he thinks that there's just a lot I'll of lofty this out. expectations I can do this. out there in I'll terms that right of here. Maybe uh, if I go full uh, revenue growth. Ooh, uh, free does that cash work? Flow generation. So, no, so and he thinks their content there. costs are going to be a bit higher than others. Est there we go. Could you hear that? What was it? Was that audible for y'all when I had that tab shared? Uh, so yeah, let me know if you could hear that and if that functions okay. I'll just sort of leave that there for a moment. Okay, it looks like yeah, you could hear it. Thank you for that. Okay, uh, great. Okay, cool. And and it's it's muted now, right? Like, like I'm pretty sure I hit mute for that tab. Uh, so, okay, worked great. Okay, that implies it worked then and it's quiet now. Okay, perfect. Okay, cool. Look at that. Fantastic. Thank you so much for the help with the comments. Appreciate it. Good. So, um, oh, yeah, it's actually only about 20 seconds behind. That's not bad. That's not bad for streaming. Wow. Look how cool this is. Like, sorry, I'm geeking out a little bit that I could... That I, I'm on a stupid laptop here with a little 3D camera. Well, the th it's my favorite web camera. I think you could just go to metkevin.com slash webcam. It's linked in the description, metkevin.com slash webcam. I have that, a little light, and a laptop, and then this, this mic here. It's kind of weird for a mobile setup. Like, everybody gives me funny looks in the lobby. And it's also, like, 19 degrees outside, and I definitely got the short shorts on, so people are also giving me the weird looks because of that. Yeah. Um, you know how comfortable short shorts are? I got like 27 pairs of these because they're $17. They're great. <clears throat> All right. So, um, yeah, let me go ahead and unmute this. Let's listen to the bell and let's get some reaction here. That's the one that is the water cooler one. It is the one that people talk about their newest program. I still don't find that happening to the other guys. Although David Zasloff uh, at Warner Brothers is doing a TikTok uh, and, and uh, let's say... A uh, uh, cutting floor extravaganza for Soprano. Who knew they had it? Guys, let's get the opening bells in the CNBC real time exchange of the big board today. It is Pfizer. Yeah, okay, that is like 90% red. It is such a give back from yesterday. So uh, somebody's like, you got me at the course member live stream pitch. Well, people love that and the archive of that. And you lost me at the short shorts. Sorry, man. Sorry. Uh, okay, now people are commenting bloodbath. Well, I love where this is going to go. Okay, let's go look at the screen here. Stand by. Share screen, Weeble. You know, you have to think, like, why, why would anybody add buying pressure the day before or two days before CPI? That's going to be something else to consider. But I actually don't know. This isn't that much of a bloodbath. Like, I mean, it's not plummeting at the open. Unity's kind of holding on a little bit. PayPal's still at 60 bucks. PayPal can't move. Okay, NVIDIA's giving up. Yeah, NVIDIA's throwing in the towel. Yeah, it's going to go negative here in a second. It's going to lose the lead. The Tesla down about a percent here. Oh, it's trying to go green, though. I don't know if it's going to be able to pull it off. You got a lot of sell pressure today, it looks like. Yeah, C3 AI. How are they still existent? This company, C3 AI. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I dislike that company. I think they're, I kind of think they, they're kind of a scam. <laughs> Sorry. It's just an opinion, okay? It's just an opinion. Uh, but uh, yeah, look at that. Wow, Solar Edge. Ooh, that's on the week chart. Let's look at them on the minute chart here. Yeah, Solar Edge dropping. So this is a, uh, Anytime you get these interest rate sensitive movers, the Teslas, the uh, Enphase, the Solar Edge, it's generally just a sign of like, okay, time to unprice some more of those Fed cuts. So you're getting a little bit of that right now. You're getting some Coinbase dropping. Um, I want to be exceptionally clear. I think this gets approved tomorrow and this sucker probably starts plummeting. Uh, people are going to unwind their bets on Coinbase. Uh, and and so people are going to front run that. But it is a red day today. I mean, look, Unity now down 4%. This is actually a good thing. So I know I, I want to, this is going to sound crazy, but I kind of want Unity to like get destroyed today because they laid people off. And that's because I selfishly think we need to send a signal to like every, everybody just let's short Unity. Okay, that's probably illegal. I probably shouldn't do that. Uh, no, don't don't do anything I just said. Uh, but like the more there's a signal that says to companies, do not lay off 25% of your workforce, uh, the less that might be likely to happen because companies do not want to get punished in the stock market. 
So hope you're having a great day. How's House Hack doing? Great. You know, if you haven't looked at the uh, House Hack YouTube channel yet, it's linked down below and you can see some really cool uh, uh, updates there. So anyway, what am I going to do today? I'm going to be watching Unity. I want to see this plummet. What else am I going to be looking at? I need NVIDIA to, to candlestick close over 500. It is critical. NVIDIA breaking 500 will be very bad. Very bad. So you want a bad day? NVIDIA goes down, you know, what, 5%? It doesn't need to go down that much. Or four and a bit, something between four and 5%. Bad day. Uh, you know, Tesla's down a bit over here. Some of this could just be our market open trading as well. You know, who knows? The first 15 minutes are always like a cluster F. And then once everything finds its footing, you can always start turning green again. Who knows? It'll be really interesting to see how the market plays out today. Uh, let me see what kind of opening news we're getting from uh, the suits. All right. Let's see here. Low earnings bar supports a resumption of rally. Oh, that's interesting. Stock market momentum got some surprise support yesterday as markets flip-flop between the macro outlook and a slew of upcoming earnings. Strongest gain since November gave bulls fresh hope the correction is done and the rally will resume soon. Now well, today doesn't feel that way. Uh, so implied correlation to 2017, whatever. Is the 10-year overvalued? Bill Gross is cautioning against what he says is an overvaluing of the 10 year of the treasury at 4%. Okay, so that basically means he thinks yield should be higher. Uh, let's see here, points to tips. Oh, inflation protected securities. Oh, wow, Bill Gross, really? It's interesting. Thought he'd be a little bit more uh, bullish on treasury values going up, which would mean yields come down, right? Price up, yields down. Pricing for an early cut makes sense under Fed's new paradigm. Wait a minute. What new paradigm? Don't please don't tell me they're gonna start talking about fate. Like that's the last, that's the last kitten in my bag. Wait, that's not the right. Is it kitten and hat? I don't know. Whatever. Okay, what's the Fed's new paradigm? The Federal Reserve decision in December to pivot to a more dovish stance suggests that the economy is not the primary policy input. It would make more sense through the prism of reserves. Oh, okay. That means a March or January rate cut could happen even without a sudden worsening in the pace of growth. The Fed's unexpected endorsement of the markets, already dovish rate pricing at its December, December meeting, can, ex can be explained by looking at liquidity. Its backdrop for most of the second half of last year was extremely favorable as the treasury market performed its own uh, pivot by skewing issuance towards bills, shorter term, okay? This enabled money market funds to buy government debt using idle liquidity, fine. But that backdrop is becoming less benign as interest bills swell. The chart below shows the impulse from reserves at the start of the year is starting to fade, making it a little more difficult for risk assets. Unchecked coupon payments to bondholders will suck reserves and reserve velocity from the system, leaving risk assets in a precarious position. Okay, wow. That's... Um, that's a lot. It basically suggesting there's a limit to how much of a movement we might be able to expect from treasuries, which would be beneficial to yields, uh, which would then be beneficial to risk assets. And so there are some structural reasons maybe uh, to not expect treasuries to uh, treasury yields to tumble as much as, uh, you know, maybe they had. Although personally, I think we should be closer to 3.8, 3.75 on that 10 year. We should be sitting over there. Uh, this 4% level is kind of ridiculous. So that's one take. All right. Now, uh, how interesting. There's a headline. Best paying U.S. police jobs at $112,000 at $112, a year struggle to lure recruits. It's going to be so hard to be a cop these days. A lot, of, a lot of hatred towards law enforcement right now. Anyway, so this is Tesla sitting down 1.2. Unity's down about 5. NASDAQ doesn't really know which direction it wants to go. Okay, end phase is now, I'm sorry, uh, uh, NVIDIA is on its way to a 5% decline. I'm telling you, you break, you break that full candlestick of 500, it's not good for NVIDIA. Uh, hopefully that doesn't happen because I, I would like to see a full confirmation break here. But it's kind of, it's going to look like, in my opinion, Tesla uh, 258. We could not get a full candlestick break at 258. And we've been punished ever since on this. 
There's your 258 level. We just could not get the full candlestick break over here. And uh, and so look what happened right after that. Oops. You know, it's uh, the little oopsie oopsies. I don't know. They're not substantially challenging to understand, I think. Yeah, it's all relatively reasonable and functional. So, all right. Volatility index. Yeah, but volatility is still so ridiculously low. You know, go out on a weak chart on volatility and tell me that volatility has gone up. Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, obviously it ticks up on these red days. So what do we got here? Carnival Cruise Lines down 89 basis points. Uh, yep. Uh, Redfin down 171. Bills down a little bit. Embraer's down a bit. Matterport's down 2%. Boy, they've been stuck in the mud, huh? Look at this one on the week chart. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, when did it really tank? Oh, look at that. It really tanked in January of 22. How interesting. Yeah. Dave and Buster's. What? Dave and Buster's went to fifty dollars. Holy crap! This has been range bound between thirty and forty forever. I have not been paying attention to this one for a minute. Holy smokers! Oh yeah, look at that. Since the middle of November, Dave and Buster's started kicking butt. Wow. Job Dave and Buster's. I mean, everything started doing really well since the middle of November, but good for them for finally being able to break out. They've been stuck for so long. Uh, ooh, look at that near per. Perfect bounce there on uh, Apple, uh, bouncing on your 100-day moving average, uh, and, and, and probably also your FIB retracement here. You know, I'm not seeing this get a lot worse today. I don't see the market really vomiting here. NVIDIA, no. No, I don't think you're going to get that 5% down today. I mean, you're down 64 bips, but, uh, you know, you're already starting to try to come back up here on NVIDIA. We'll see if it lasts. I know a little bit of give back is probably healthy from yesterday, but the market doesn't seem like it's vomiting that badly. So, you know, uh, let's, let's, I'm going to look for a moment at the 10 year. Uh, yeah, sometimes I play VIX. Uh, okay. I need to get back into trading a little, like actually trading a little bit more, but uh, I'll send out all the, all the course members waiting. I'll send you an alert when, when, when I send, uh, when I start short and coin. I know part of me is like tempted to, to start establishing the short beforehand, but I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little torn on, I, there, I, th I think there's a chance it just plummets right on the approval, but I think there's also a chance it skyrockets like 20% on the approval. The second that, like that's going to be the juiciest short, in my opinion. You want to know the juiciest short in Coinbase? It's if, at the moment approval hits and that sucker jumps. 10, 20 percent, or whatever. If that happens, that's the moment I want to short because that's the part that's not going to last. So uh, <laughs> that's what I'm. That's kind of what I'm like, like loading the shotgun for. Honestly, <laughs> it's kind of evil. I'm sorry. Like I feel bad, like laughing about shorting a company, and I could get totally burned too. But I don't think I will. I think I'm right. I think Coinbase is, you know, like half. Um, yeah. Sorry. Anyway. Uh, and, and that's going to take a year. I want to be clear about that. Like, you might have an initial drop, but its longer term outlook is actually substantially in question without it being a broker. See, Bitcoin's going to get legalized, but guess who's still illegal? Coinbase. They're still not a broker dealer. So, I mean, they could become a broker dealer, but that's going to require probably them either dividing up the company or giving up trading the other currencies uh, or crypto assets, you know, whatever you want to call it. So, I don't know. Let's just put it this way. As Elon says, there'll be no shortage of entertainment. Okay, who's like really getting burned today? Just Unity? I mean, good. I want to see them at the bottom of this list. Oh, and Nikola. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Put Unity up there with Nikola. I'm okay with that. Uh, although you do have Tesla over here just kind of dropping off a cliff. Where is it going? Uh, yeah, it is uh, in transparency or in full transparency. It's a little bit of no man's land here. I mean, it did not care at all about the 100 day. It just does not care about the 100 day moving average at all. So maybe you can hope for that 200 to hold you as a shelf, but it's in a little bit of a precarious position right now, it, which also makes sense. I think a lot of people are holding their breath on this one for earnings. So, uh, you know, explain the unity issue. Maybe you just joined, but uh, it's because of the layoffs. Like, I'm sorry if you have unity. It's just, I don't want, 
I don't want a company to get rewarded right now for doing layoffs because it's just going to encourage more layoffs and then, then it's really going to screw the economy. So I'm a little nervous about that. Uh, what did I miss? Why Tesla down? Did you just wake up? That's okay. Welcome to life. Tesla's down because earnings are coming up. Interest rate expectations are getting slightly cut. And Elon needs to go on the earnings call and tell us all it's going to be okay, as opposed to coming on and being a doomer and a little weenie baby. We need, we need a strong Elon this time, okay? That's what we need. We need a strong Elon who comes out and says, hey, advertising works. We're kicking butt. We're doing the best we've ever done before. That's what we need. We need a real a man to come up there. Okay, I shouldn't say that because that sounds sexist. That's not the point. We just need Elon to put his pants on. We'll put it that way. And that's also kind of ironic coming from somebody who's wearing short shorts right now. Uh, and yeah, uh, although I am short Costco. What is Costco doing today? I don't think I have them on this computer. So watch there, the one thing that's green. Okay, now it's still down a little bit. Good. But like maybe I should have closed my short here. <laughs> it went down to 641. Still holding that sucker. Darn it. Um, that's all right. I, I, I said when I opened that position, it'd probably be a two month play. So I'll, I'll give it time. I'll give it a couple of earnings. Well, that would be like six months, but whatever. Uh, you want to know why I read or I shorted Costco crystal, go to ehack.com, type in Costco and you'll find out the whole thesis is there. I would explain it right now, but frankly, I got to read. Even though I'm a licensed financial advisor, licensed real estate broker, and becoming a stock broker, this video is neither personalized financial advice nor real estate advice for you. It is not tax, legal, or otherwise personalized advice tailored to you. This video provides generalized perspective, information, and commentary. Any third-party content I share, like StreamYard, medkevin.com slash StreamYard, should not be deemed endorsed by me. However, it may also be a paid affiliation, like StreamYard. This video is not and shall never be deemed reasonably sufficient information for the purposes of evaluating a security. We the other paid promotion of the medkevin.com slash webcam link. Uh, and then, of course, the courses uh, over at meetkevin.com. Join the course member live streams. Those are amazing. Uh, and then, of course, the lectures we're building. I'm taking more suggestions. I'm going to add even more value, more lectures. I keep doing that. Uh, I also operate in, in an actively managed ETF, hold long positions in various securities, potentially including those mentioned in this video. However, I have no relationship to any market makers other than a house hack, and I'm not presently acting as a market maker. John, 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 no background. So I know. I didn't play it today. Anyway, I got to go. Uh, I'm going to post the course member live stream link. See you.